Hello, Cal. Oh, Kevin. What are you up to nowadays? I'm an Ansel's mystery customer now. What does that mean? Well, you've got to be alert, sharp, on your toes. Mysterious. Evening, Kevin. Yeah. Well, you see, it's my job to check Ansel's pubs to make sure the customers have a good time, get good service. Thanks, George. Then I report all my findings into a hidden microphone under my lapel. Well, it's sort of miniaturised. How fascinating. Yeah. Anyway, nice seeing you again, Kevin. Later. Service? Good. Clientele? Still a mystery. Ansel's. Better service, better pubs. No mystery. Oh, right, beefy burgers. Oh, tell him, Scarecrow, tell him. Oh, who made them? This lasagna's right Italian. Oh, tell him, tell him. Who made it? Uh, just one thing, Farmer. They don't contain no meat. Uh, no meat? Oh, no. Not for me. You won't be wanting this tasty country pie, then. Oh, uh, who made it? Linda McCartney! Linda McCartney Frozen Foods. My healthy no-meat recipes. My meat-eating friends. Now there are two ways to win a fortune in today. Play Rich Six plus the brand new stock market game, Tycoon. Get your card in today, tomorrow. Welcome back. Well, here he is. The man whose success started with Mandy, and whose family now includes Emmy, Grammy and Tony, plus a vast army of Manilo maniacs. Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Manilo. Well, not even Mel Gibson got that, I tell you. Michael, here you are, here we are, ten years later. Did you know somebody told me backstage that it's been ten years since you and I have seen each other? Do you remember the last show? Certainly do, because there was another lady on that, I mean, a lady on that show, um, who doesn't seem to be around quite so much. Well, now. I saw her on CNN a couple of days ago, but... Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was quite a show. That she was came great. up to you afterwards, didn't she? Grabbed told your jacket. And told me that it didn't fit well. <laughs> No wonder she's the boss around here. Well, those were the days. Uh, your fans, of course, are well represented here. Do, uh, in the main... In the main, they're not, they're not teenagers, I suppose, most of them. But do they behave? Do they ever get out of control? Do they ever get out of control? Yeah. Well... <laughs> Leave the she studio. Said, she says they like to. Yeah, well, they get, out, they get out of control in a fun way. They, you know, they have a good time. There was one time, you know, I, I have a, um, a little section in my show where I ask somebody to come up and sing a duet with me on the stage during the song Can't Smile Without You. I've been doing it for a long time. And one time, somewhere in the United States, um, I had a, a, a lovely lady on stage. We sang Can't Smile Without You, and I just knew there was something wrong. And I saw it, the evidence on the floor. What? I swear to God, she was she peed, she peed in her she peed. Honestly, I don't know if that's flattering or not. What do you think? Depends on your standing. Really. Well, I think that's touching. I wouldn't of myself, but I mean it's yeah, it was, lovely. Uh, it's lovely. So it was, what, what did you do? What happened? I, I well, I tried to ignore it. You know, I. <laughs> We all tried to ignore it, but we couldn't. It was, but, you know, people do get nervous during that section. That's yeah. only happened once. You know, one, one person kind of keeled over a little bit and one peeing on the stage. So that's not bad for 10 years. Well, that's... Mary, you know that uh, TV, TV fans in Britain, they like to come up Nothing to Nothing the... like his fans. Nothing. Yeah. Well, they, but they do come up in, in this country anyway, and they talk to people they like in the street in a very friendly and casual way, but Americans don't seem to walk in the street, the stars, very that's much. That's not true. We ah. do walk. Even in Beverly Hills, and I... I don't know how long ago it was, maybe 15 years ago, you and I, never having met, were walking in opposite directions on Rodeo Drive, and I recognized you, and I knew you recognized me too, and we got actually past each other, and we both stopped at the same time and turned around and said, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened a couple of times. That happened to me with, uh, 
with Lauren Bacall on, on uh, Central Park West in New York. The same thing happened, we took, but I just, you know, that was, that, and that was like really thrilling too. We did the same thing. We turned around, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? I just didn't. <laughs> it happened to me with Elizabeth Taylor, I know. Did it? Feeling, yeah. <laughs> no, Brian, right. comedian to me with my milkman. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hi. You know, no, no. <laughs> Only you didn't recognize <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Comedians, though, don't get knickers flung uh, at them much, do they? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, I like it when uh, Barry sees one voice and things like that, and then thousands of women get these candles out, and they all start screaming. And that's because of all the hot wax. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes you wonder what type of women go to Barry Manilow concerts when they got candles in their bags. You ever thought... <laughs> <laughs> I just think Barry, <laughs> you've, des oh. you've described yourself as a musical misfit, which sounds a bit brutal. Brutal? Yeah. No, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. You know, I, I guess I did like it when I, was, when I was going through it, but I really didn't know any other way to be. I just had to do what it is I did. And nobody could seem to categorize me over, those, over the first years. They, couldn't, they didn't know where to put the albums, you know, whether it was rock or pop and what, you know, the categories. Mm. And so I, I kind of liked it. And uh, it, it's, I think it's helped me uh, last, you know. I think when you are a musical or a misfit of any kind and you take your liabilities and turn them into assets, you wind up. Do only, the only guy doing it, or one of the few people that are doing, you know, what you do, and if it's successful, then that's the only place the audience can get it, you know. But how so, do uh, you categorize your music? Because there have been various... I categorize it as pop. I say I do pop music, yeah. Now, through the years, of course, you've had the seal of approval from fellow musicians, haven't you? And Bob Dylan's a fan. Yeah, that was an interesting story. Well, you know, when, when, um, I would say that I've had uh, the seal of approval from musicians from the, from the beginning. Anybody, all of the musicians that I've ever worked with, we usually get on uh, uh, very well. And the same thing with some of these albums that I've had with Mel Torme and Sarah Vaughan and, and people like Barbara Cook and, and my friend Bette Midler and Nancy Wilson. And we've always gotten along um, uh, really well. But I met Bob Dylan at a, at a party once and he gave me a compliment and I wasn't sure whether it was... For, for real, because I, I wouldn't imagine that Bob Dylan would even be aware of, you know, what, I, what the kind of music I, I do. But it was for real, because, and I should have known better because he's in the business, you know, he knows what's going on. But it seemed real genuine. I was really, I was real flattered. Mm. There are a lot of stories <coughs> in this week's papers, um, but the people in this country, this is changing the subject, don't care for therapists. We think we just go and talk to a, your, your pal, it's just as good. But in America, people swear by it, and you do, and you say if you don't do that, you turn into your own mother. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I think happens. But, you know, I think that uh, it's, I think it's, I don't know how people get, a, get along without it. Honestly, I don't know how anybody gets along without it. What do you do? You go and lie on the couch an hour or two a day? Well, look how you talk about that. Look how you just get... What do you do? You sit around. No, it's, it's. I think it's an incredibly important thing for everyone to do. You've got to. You've got to become more of yourself, and you can't do. I don't think you can do without help. Mary, you, you've had therapy too. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's probably not a person in this world who, if lucky enough to find the right therapist, and and if they're like marriage relationships, you know, it, it has to have the the chemistry. But I don't think there's a person who couldn't benefit from a good sit-down with a pro, and that's really what it, most of us do. <laughs> Did I say something? Oh, 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 no, not that kind of pro. <laughs> uh, well, that could help a few problems, of course. But, uh, why is it that Americans have the attitude and we don't over here? We don't seem to need it. I mean, we do have counsellors are coming in now. And I think one day people are going to miss a bus and a counsellor is going to be there and saying... Well, yeah. you guys, and I say you guys, but I'm English too, but um, you're pretty buttoned up. And you're, you're pretty much pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and, and, and just shine it on. You think that's good? I think that's very unhealthy. <laughs> I think it's important to, to get to recognize what's going on in your life so that you can maybe have a happy life before it's over, you know, to make some changes. So. Don't you think you, you, you tend to look at it too much then? I mean, it's like comedy. I mean, you should oh, never really analyze it. Yeah, you just yeah, no, but do you know better than that. You yeah. have to analyze your jokes. To some and degree, your, your, but... Yeah. Would you, you use therapy, Brian? You, uh, I went consider? to an acupuncturist to give up smoking, you know. Yeah. He got all these pins out and stuck them in my fags. Not the same thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you see, that's different for you, that. That's like us being pro. <laughs> well, I know the greatest therapy, of course, is to have a sense of humour about yourself. And most right. of the Manilo gags I know come from Manilo, don't they? Well, you know, I've, I've never taken myself that seriously. I take the, the music that I do seriously, but I've never taken myself that seriously. So, you know, so when, when, um, when people have a good laugh, I, I'm, I'm all right with it, you know. I, I actually collect cartoons, you know. That I've, I've, I've been like the... the uh, fo you've got, I'm sure you've got cartoons that you've been the, the middle of, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And that's kind of fun, you know, and... Uh, like what? Well, uh, Popeye stood up, stood up for me uh, one, one time. You get Popeye over, over yeah. here? Well, Bluto was, uh, was... Somebody was putting me down... On, I think a uh, Bluto was putting me down, and Popeye punched him out. <laughs> I hey, thought that was kind of cool. Right. And then there was an English, there was an English cartoon that I, I have, and it's a, it's a, a fan, like a like a you know one of those um, um, fans, you know, a with fan. a big nose in the middle that says Barry Manilow fans. Oh, you yeah. know, I thought that was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But you don't invent them yourself against yourself, then. No, I don't, I don't do that. No. That goes too far, yeah. yeah. <coughs> now, the song that you're going to perform for us tonight, Copacabana, yeah, you made it into... song that would not die. <laughs> well, you made it into a film, didn't you? We made it into the, to a film in, in the, the United States, and uh, there's, uh, the word is that we're bringing it over here as a play, as a musical. How far have the plans gone? Because uh, we've got a couple of good musicals here now. Uh, yeah, well, it's all written. And um, it may be here sooner than you think. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. What about Lola, the girl with the thing cut down to here? And right, the... no feather in her hair, right? Yeah. Well, the part's open. Anybody want to audition? Or... <laughs> hey. No, no, I think you've got the wrong idea there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but there are a few ladies who'd like to join you here, I'm sure. It's great to see you. Thanks. Your eyes have gone very blue. Is this something you do to I'm them? Jealous. They're matching the jacket. Is this... And he matches his jacket, so it's all going well. <laughs> anyway. Barry, we're looking forward to hearing this. In the meantime, thank you very much once again right. after 10 years for your company, uh -huh. Barry Manilow. <laughs> and thank you, Mary Tyler Moore and Brian Conley. Thank you. We're, uh, we're off the air for the next few weeks, but I'll be back on Sunday, May the 16th, in the company of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, Demi Moore, and Brian Ferry. Yes, all of them in that one show. We'll have to buy some more furniture for that one. May the 16th. Now, here is Barry at the Copacabana.
She lost her youth, she lost her tone, and now she's lost her mind at the Copa, Copa Cabana, the hottest spot north of Havana, at the Copa, Copa Cabana. Music and passion were always the fashion at the Copa, at the Copa. Jealousy for the medics. You get more remarkable by the day. You're absolutely impossible. Claire's moving back with me. Yeah, I see. I hope you do. Your feelings can't have changed that drastically in such a short time. Yours did, didn't they? Yeah, look, Jessie's. Pull your finger so out. Or I'll marry Jay instead. Medics, Monday drama at nine. Warren Mitchell is the special guest on This Morning, and that's tomorrow at 10.35 on Central. Introduced throughout this year.